Ladies and gentlemen, my name is XPC Reaper. Two things I have to say right now. Welcome to Trojan Horse Gaming. This is another episode of the Library Card, and Happy New Year to everyone out there. Of course, I missed the Christmas episode. This was originally meant to go up last week, but there was a whole thing of pyre cuts, and then the video got corrupted because it was mid-rendering when the pyre cut out, and it was just a whole big thing, and it really irritated me, but suffice it to say, we're going to have another look at this. We're going to go back to this, because this is a game I absolutely love. There's no question about it. You can see right here, if you recognize this options menu, you've played Unreal Tournament 2004. This is basically straight across. This is a standalone version of a mod for Unreal Tournament 2004, which was originally released in 2005. But then they released this on Steam as a standalone in 2009. It's published by Tripwire Interactive, who produced the retail version, but they brought along all the original mod developers to actually work on it. Tripwire, some of you might actually know the name, they've only produced so far the Red Orchestra titles and the Rising Storm titles, so they are very much a mech something unreal sort of developer. Uh, options menu, let's have a look at display, you can see you got texture detail, character detail. You got a good range, I mean you go from very low, you've got a good amount of presets in each of these things, like world detail obviously you've only got a few, scope detail, this is nice, textured reduces like sway and everything, but I prefer modeled because I like that sort of realism, I've got everything set to high, and just to clarify, you don't need a powerful rig to run everything on high on this. Because this is a mod. This is the same engine as 2004. I can play this on my laptop, which isn't that powerful for gaming. On full everything, pretty much. Audio wise, you got effects, music, and you got voice chat. You can actually use your microphone as a uh, just voice over IP. You can dampen gain volume, that's one thing I should probably actually switch on in case anyone does try to chat. Um, internet quality, you can actually choose each of these things individually which is nice. You got fully rebindable keys. Of course I've bound every key that I actually require so it's it's pretty simplistic. You got auto slope which is nice so if you go on the, like a uh, 30 degree slope or something going upwards for example, say a stairs that's a 30 degree angle, your camera will automatically pan so that that will be your level point and then once you go back down that will be perfectly fine. You can enable joystick support which is nice, it's, it's cool having the ability to use a joystick to actually fire and all in a game, got mount sensitivity, each of these things I quite like got adjustable HUD, you can hide the HUD, you can have a light version of it, you can show a kill counter, weapon info, personal info, score, uh, no console death messages, don't really care about any of that. Um, it's pretty much as simple, We're gonna keep HUD opacity, opacity or opacity, not sure how it's pronounced at that there. If we go into profile and achievements, you can see in this game there are seven classes. Each class requires a specific, uh, I suppose you could say a specific investment to unlock. For example, if you go for a field medic, the only way to level that up is to earn uh, healing points, which you use just by using medical syringes and uh, your medic darts from all the medic guns on people. You've got things like a support specialist, you can, you're can you required to weld door and hit points and deal damage with shotguns. Sharpshooters are very simple, it's just blow the heads off enemies and actually successfully kill them with that headshot. You got deal 3.5 million damage with assault and battle rifles and kill stalkers. Now, stalkers I'll discuss when we actually get into the game, I'll discuss each type of enemy. You got deal melee weapon damage and deal damage with flame weapons and deal damage with explosives. One thing I should point out, these are not exclusive. For example, if I'm playing a, a commando and I throw a grenade to kill a bunch of enemies that are running towards me, that counts as level progress towards my demolitions class. There are six levels for each class. Currently, the only one I've actually maxed out is demolitions. 
Field Medic, of course, I'm like 36,000 away, well, 35,000 away from actually leveling up, so that would be the equivalent of 350 people healed from 0 HP up to 100, but you can't heal from 0 HP, obviously. Uh, support Specialist, I'm not that progressed in it. Commando, I'm more progressed. Berserker is my weakest. And you've got a wide variety of different people or different classes in this. Each of these is just a cosmetic model, but a large number of them do require you to buy DLC to unlock, which is... It's... I suppose it's kind of okay because the game goes on sale that often that you're really not talking about much. I'm gonna go for Lance Corporal Lee Barron. He looks like he's having a bit of fun. Character models and everything are very much Unreal Tournament 2004 themed. It's it's not a game that's got massive fidelity but it does have fun gameplay. You'll notice 252 achievements in this game. This game has a lot of achievements, no question about that. Some of them can range from just completing a map on a specific difficulty, others range killing stalkers with explosives, killing sirens, killing bloats, 10,000 specimens, uh, 10 specimens feeding on dead teammates' corpses, 25 burning specimens with a crossbow. There are a lot of interesting ones, definitely. There's one for... I can't remember what it's called, but you have to actually use an entire M4 magazine and eliminate only one specimen with it, which is is pretty damn funny to actually try to get it, because it's just a case that you will just fire once. Let's search by ping. Right, let's go for a low ping match. I don't know why you're popping me up to that top. Um, let's see, what one can we do? Let's go for West London and join this server. So, West London is one of a number of maps. Originally on launch, I think there were only... It was either five or seven maps that were basically straight shifts over, but since then they've released a ton of DLC, which is free maps and everything for this. And they, they really have just done so much to this game for free that when they started charging for uh, cosmetic DLC and the community weapon packs and everything, I didn't really get mad or anything because I appreciated the fact that they've given me that much free stuff that I sort of owe them. <laughs> That's probably the best way to describe it. I don't know why, but I accidentally selected the Firebug class. I'm not going to go for Medic. Um, you are going to be sold. Um, right, Support Special. Okay, it looks like we're going to have to actually be the Firebug class. We're going to purchase that Trench Gun, which fires uh, incendiary shells. Now, you can see there's... Uh, one guy playing as Firebug, Firebug, we've got one guy playing as Demolitions, we've got a person playing as the Field Medic, and I'm playing as a Firebug as well, mostly because I accidentally picked the wrong class. I'm going to see if... Okay, at the end of this wave I'm going to become a Sharpshooter, that's actually alright. So, you can see up in the top right corner we've got 122 specimens inbound. What does that mean? In this wave, we're going to have to fight off 122 specimens. Now, those ones I just shot are the stalkers. They are the stealthy buggers. You've got those ones there are the crawlers. you got clots. And just a fair variety of different specimens. That there is a gore fast. Each one has a special ability of some variety. Now, this... Uh, it, it reduces them incrementally, I suppose you could say. The difficulty is very much incremental. In that, um, it won't throw everything at you at once. There's never a point where you're going to spawn in, and it'll just be the most difficult specimens, the flesh points or anything. You'll never have a case where you're fighting only Skreks. 
Now you'll notice a lot of these are sort of Christmas themed. That's because at the moment they are running the Twisted Christmas event. And they run a lot of events per year. There's no question about that. It's nice that they do it because it implements a lot of the time they give new maps and everything. I really don't like those sirens. A lot of the time they'll give you new maps or more, uh, more achievements. But they've just got so much content that comes out with every actual game season, pretty much. It's really nice that they do it. Because it's not something they have to do. I mean, as a company, I'm sure they're not obligated to actually do anything like what they do. But they just give you that much free stuff that you can't help but feel appreciative. Now, when you actually buy the game for the first time, you might not think that they've given you much free stuff, but they've probably released at least an additional, maybe, 150% of content over what they had in the base game, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, they've given you so much free stuff. Any game company should feel proud of how much they've actually done for the community and this this one really has done so much for a community they've given you so much i mean that there i just got an achievement and all that achievement probably wasn't in the original game now i'm just going to give you a little breakdown of the ones the sort of christmas elf ones that you saw are called clots they have the ability that when they swipe at a class who isn't a berserker they will, um, they'll essentially just trap them and hold on to them so that they can't move unless they actually stun or kill that target. Then you've got other ones such as the sirens, who are the sort of Christmas carol ones that scream and deal a lot of damage that way. I'm gonna sell this trench gun, let's see, what can we buy? I'm gonna buy a crossbow because that's incredibly effective. Um, I'm going to auto-fill my ammo then, and I'm going to heal up. Now, uh, I should heal that guy. There you go. Right, so we, uh, we're on the wave 7 now. Wave 7, I believe, is where they might start introducing the flesh points. I'm not 100% sure on this. If I point out a flesh pound, then they've started appearing. If not, then they haven't. But apart from the sirens and the uh, the sirens and the clots, you've also got other ones called gorefasts, who will get quicker. They're the gingerbread men, by the way. They'll get quicker whenever they get within a certain range of a player. It doesn't matter if it's the player that they're targeting. So you can see right there, we've got that Skrek and fortunately you're able to stun these guys yes oh my god it's so much less difficult than I remember being a sharpshooter I I really haven't given the crossbow much of a chance before and I regret that immediately now ooh there we go one good thing is that if I kill one of these specimens with a crossbow, more often than not I can actually retrieve that bolt and it will travel through multiple opponents. Like, let's see if I can line up. Yes! I got two Christmas clock kills there and I got a Gorefast kill. Ah, damn it, I missed a headshot on him. So, let's see if we can't get another. Ah, damn it. I'm not doing great with these headshots on these snowmen. That's another one. We got Skrex coming up. Skrex can be stunned by crossbows, which is definitely a benefit because they are ridiculously difficult at certain points. And I've used a fair number of crossbow bolts, but worth it so much. Gonna take the head off them. Headshot, headshot. You can switch on the flashlight on your 9mm tactical, by the way, if you're actually using it. This will give you a fair, reasonable indicator of where you're aiming with your hip fire. It's not pinpoint, 
but this game has no crosshairs or anything, which is good. I personally like the fact that you have to rely on your ability to determine where your first shot is going to hit. Going to try and line up a headshot on him. Damn it. Did I miss? No, I didn't miss. He just takes more than one shot to kill. Let's kill him. You can anticipate where the husks are going to fire. Um, because they will try to lead you as a target. Damn it. Yes, there we go. That's his ass uh, saved. You guys should be really appreciative of what I'm doing for you. But, um... Okay, so you got the Gorefast, you got the Sirens, you got the Crawlers who are just basically... They don't have any special ability other than that they can jump to get close to you. When they get within a certain distance, they'll do a sort of lunge attack. And that can end up making you miss a shot, for example. You've got the... Uh... Gorefast. You've got bloats who can vomit acid at you. It's a uh, bloat bile and it's it's pretty dangerous if you're not actually paying attention. Okay, it looks like I'm gonna actually keep these weapons. Yeah, it can be very dangerous if you're not paying attention. Then you've got the flesh pines who I pointed out. They have really high health and when they get damaged by a certain amount or they haven't seen a player in a fair while they will get enraged which will make them move significantly faster and they deal a lot more damage with their first swipe after enrage mode but after that they go back into standard mode which is pretty fortunate because honestly you don't want to mess with a angry flesh point damn it yes Fortunately, if you've got a crossbow, you can take them out at a good distance. Don't know why I just wasted a crossbow bolt on him. Let's take out some enemies with headshots. All guns have iron sights in this, by the way. Except for the hunting shotgun. That's the only one that doesn't have any form of iron sights. But if you're using a hunting shotgun or a range where you have to actually scoop in, you're... Probably not going to deal as much damage as you potentially could with it. Yes. It's awesome when you get points where you can actually deal so much damage to these guys. Because it's really a case of, in this game, if you can't get a high damage output, then you're probably going to suffer because of it. And you need to consider things like your team's ability to do damage and your ability to do damage. You have to consider that with a number of specimens coming towards you. And then you have to also consider the health of each specimen. For example, if I'm facing off against a bunch of crawlers like I am here, this isn't particularly difficult. I'm not going to run away because I know I can't do this because these ones are very low health. I definitely can successfully kill all these specimens before they get to me. If I was dealing with a large number of flesh pounds, on the other hand though, it would be a completely different story. Oh, okay, we got a scrack there. Headshots are important for taking out a lot of specimens because you can see that I'm taking the heads off a lot of these specimens and they're dying. That's because I deal additional headshot damage, which should be enough to kill any specimen as soon as I remove its head. But if you're not playing as a sharpshooter class, you don't have that headshot bonus, and you won't actually deal as much damage per headshot as you would playing as a sharpshooter. Meaning sometimes they can survive for a few seconds without their heads until they bleed out. And now, when they bleed out, they just fall down dead, but you still have to consider that they won't have a special ability for the last few seconds of their life, but they can definitely damage you. There's no getting around that there. And so you do need to consider a lot of things when actually playing this game. Now, we're actually doing very well in this. Nobody has actually died. In fact, very, very little damage has been done to us as a team at this stage. And it's, it's very good when you get points where your team is this sort of level of can't be destroyed pretty much. Okay, I just got the achievement Rudolph the Bloody Nosed Reindeer. I'm guessing that's for killing a certain amount of crawlers. 
You move faster with melee weapons equipped, I should just point that out. So if you're ever running to the shop, you do need to actually do that. Screx, I forgot to tell you about Screx. Screx are the sort of... They look like crystal people, basically. How do I favor a uh, crossbow? Damn it. Golden hand cannon. Hmm. Right, there's a lot of stuff. You can add weapons to favorites, and nowadays you can filter your weapons by... Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. Right, I, I need to unweld this door because of you, Sarah. You're pissing me off here. He's just welded us in here. In a very dangerous spot. For apparently no reason whatsoever. It looks like he's just done it for a bit of a laugh. But if I hadn't unwelded those doors, there's no way he would have survived. Between the fact that there's a large number of Gorefast, the fact that he's a low level, and his low damage output, he would be dead. I mean, there's no question about it. In this game, you can't be Lone Wolf and successfully complete it. You need to work as a team in pretty much every instance. You can't switch weapon when you're reloading, by the way, and when you run out of ammo on a clip, and you click the fire button again, you'll automatically reload. So it can throw everything off a fair amount sometimes. I'm actually doing, this is probably my best sharpshooter match in a fair while, and I think it's all because of a crossbow. I'm, I'm liking the crossbow, but I've never given it much of a chance beforehand. And... Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you a special ability of Skrex. They can... At random points, they will speed up and try to move in closer on you as a target. Fortunately, they can be stunned with a headshot from a crossbow if it doesn't actually kill them. So even low-level sharpshooters can sort of neuter Skrex, basically. Damage neutering would be the best way to describe it, because you're taking away their ability to deal a lot of damage to your team, which they will. There's no da There's no question about it. Skrex are very dangerous, and you do need to actually be very careful when you're fighting them. Because if you don't have an ability to stun them or a very high damage output, you're not gonna successfully kill them in time for them to actually, you know, be damage neutered. You do need to consider that each enemy in this has its strengths and its benefits. Crawlers, their strength is that they, they're basically the hardest ones to see a fair amount at a time, because if they get close, they can just land a few good swipes on you and you won't even realize you got a bullpup line on the ground. One thing I will point out is the weapon variety in this game because there is a fantastic variety in weapons. Like, um, at the minute I've got 9mm pistols and a crossbow. You saw how many guns there were and that was just for my current class, the sharpshooter class. There are also other ones like um, each class has a specific weapon set tied to it and each weapon set plays upon the benefits of that class. Like the support guys get shotguns, obviously, which will help them level up. You've got the commandos who get battle rifles. You've got uh, the demolitions class who actually use demolition weapons. Very logically, no doubt about that. So we're gonna see who actually has. Okay, it looks like everyone's got a fair amount of money, so we should actually be all right to complete this here. Uh, we're going on to wave 10. Now you'll see it, it's wave 10 out of 10, but in this game each match has 11 waves. If you're playing on long difficulty, it has 8 if you're playing on normal. And it has 5 if you're playing on short. I shouldn't actually say difficulty because that's not right. There are 4 difficulty levels in this. You've got beginner, normal, no wait, beginner, normal, hard, suicidal, and hell on earth. So you've got 5 uh, difficulties in this actual game and oh wow right off the bat we got a number of flesh points right here get the hell out of the way boys 
because trust me, you do not have the damage I put. Right. Oh, damn it. I didn't even notice you, buddy. Yeah, this is going to be a difficult wave. Yeah, I get the feeling this is us done, pretty much. Or is it? I think this could well be the end of us. Right, so we've got a number of large specimens. It basically threw us in at the deep end of this, but we should be able to survive. I forgot, I've got grenades. I'm going to throw a grenade out there. Hopefully that'll do something. Okay, that did something, definitely. Took out a number of Christmas crawlers. And probably some clots did a bit of damage to any larger specimens if they're out there. Which is nice. It's always nice to have a high damage output. Okay, damn it, we got a Skrek down there. Damn it. These specimens keep getting in the way. Ah, oh, yes. Just in time. Otherwise he was going to do a lot of damage to me there. You can see sometimes it goes into slow-mo, that happens... I'm not sure if it's a predetermined point or if it's set. But either way, it happens a decent amount at a time. We'll just pop around into your head. Oh wow, I love the ability to one-shot these guys. Right, uh, buddy, you need to heal up. So we've still got 73 more specimens to hold off in this wave. Which is okay, because I feel like we've probably dealt with most of the hard specimens at this stage. We've probably taken out pretty much all of the high HP ones. So we can probably afford to move outside a bit and get a little bit more freedom of movement. Did that kill that Skrek? No, it killed a Gorefast, which is peculiar because I'm aiming at the Skrek. There we go. So you can see my crossbow was pretty much out of ammo. I've got two bolts left but I want to save those for someone like you. I really wasn't actually doing things the right way and using it to take out some of the smaller specimens. You should take out smaller specimens with smaller damage output guns. Damn it. Okay, yeah, I am pretty much dead unless I can successfully get those guys killed or heal myself up in time. You can use the medic guns on yourself or the medical darts, I suppose you should probably call them. Damn it, we got a flesh point coming in and we got a Skrek. Oh dear, this is, this is not good unless I get some ammo. We got a flesh point and a Skrek. Both of those guys are very high damage output. So I'm going to have to reload my crossbow here in order to actually take him out. Fortunately, managed it and he's dead. We're down to the last six specimens, but in this game on high waves, you can't assume that four specimens or three specimens or anything is going to be you home safe. You have to remember that it could be three of the hardest specimens in this game. Yes, got a headshot on him. Looks like this one's running away, and for pretty damn good reason. Okay, so I'm gonna sell this crossbow and I'm gonna sell one of my revolvers. Why? Because I am going to need a very high damage output and we're gonna favorite that and we're gonna buy this. Now this gun, you'll notice, very expensive to fill up on ammo for. Each crate you see lying on the ground will give you two rounds for it, which saves you 500 pounds, but at this stage, I really, really want to actually take him out with just the very most damaging weapon, because we're about to fight the final boss of each map, a guy called the Patriarch, who is a pain in the ass. No question about it. He's got melee weapons, like he can deal damage in melee, but he's also got a Gatling gun and a rocket launcher. He can cloak to heal, 
when he needs to, let's see where he's going to spawn in. It gives you a nice little intro cinematic thing. So he's spawning right here, which is just on the other side of his tunnel. Which direction is he going to move? He's moving this way. So right, we can actually basically just scope down this tunnel and we'll be able to identify him. So where are we? Oh wow, one headshot and he's actually ran off to hill already, I think. I think he's ran off to hill. No, he hasn't. Otherwise, he would have actually spawned in a pile of specimens. He did. He did spawn in a pile of specimens. They just haven't shown up on the little marker thing yet. They have now, but they didn't at the start. And you really need to pay attention because sometimes he can get the drop on you. Okay, someone was on the other side there and they just got hit with his rocket launcher. Stop trying to shoot me with that damn rocket launcher. Come on, kill the patriarch. That looks like him dying. Okay, right, so he's, he's worn down our body armor. Yes! He's dead. He died from the flame damage, and once he dies, all these other specimens don't really matter because the match will just automatically end. And let's just throw all my money out here on the ground. That's basically a thing everyone does at the end. Everyone chucks their money out onto the ground. I don't know why they do it. It just, it's a custom in this game. And yeah, that was a match of Killing Floor. So if you feel you would enjoy this game from the look of it, you can definitely feel free. We're just going to go in at DLC content, give you a look. You've got a wide variety of DLC things. I got the, um, in one of the bundles, I think it was on Indie Gala or something, I got the Killing Floor bundle, which was the majority of the DLC. The only ones I was missing was that, 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 and that. But since then, I think they've released Golden Weapon Pack 2, Camo Weapon Pack, and Us vs. Them Weapon Pack, as well as the Community Steampunk Weapon Pack. So, these are probably all released since I actually got the bundle. Now, character-wise, you've got a wide variety of them, which are actually pretty cool. And it's a case of you don't have to buy them. They're not game-changing in the slightest. Even the weapon DLC packs are sort of all right. Golden weapon pack, that's basically just gold versions. The only ones that are different is the Us vs. Them weapon pack, Community Steam pack weapon pack, and Community weapon pack. But each of those contains weapons that are... They're essentially fundamentally the same as any other. So let's talk about the price point for this game before we actually sign off. It's £14.99 on Steam for the original, or you can get a six-pack of it for £74.95, which means you get one free copy for the price of five. And the reason it's six is because every server has a six-player limit, and if you and five other friends are playing this, it's probably going to be much more fun. Um, you can pick it up as a bundle, which features all the DLC, for £34.99. But, if you're thinking that sounds pretty steep, then I, I feel I must remind you, this does at least three community packs a year, where, or community seasons a year, like the Killing Floor Twisted Christmas event, you've got the Summer Sideshow event, you've probably got one for Easter, I'd, I'd be surprised if they didn't, you've got one for Halloween, and I think that's probably all of them. So you've got four per year, basically, and during each of those seasons, the game can range between um, a third off, which will take it down to £9.99 for a single copy. It can go as far as 75% off. This game is probably one of the most common sale items you'll actually see. And in my opinion, it's very much worth it, but that's because I've been playing the mod since 2005, back when I was Killing Floor 1.0, everything was gritty and the specimens were actually called infected instead of specimens. And it's, it's only got reviews of around 72%. 
but it's it's sold over 1 million copies and just to give you an indication this has been on steam since 2009 let's just have a look at how many players are actually playing this yeah and that's just one difficulty in fact let's search for any difficulty and we'll give you an example of just how many servers are on just how many people are playing it so you can see there's a large number of people this hasn't even stopped refreshing yet so you've got all these people playing the game if we go players low to high you've got a massive amount of people that still play this game it runs on pretty much any PC that can run Unreal Tournament 2004. It's got a tremendous soundtrack. I I kept the soundtrack out of this for just for a sec of commentary and everything, but the soundtrack is done by a man called, I think it's Synthetic. And it's got a couple of tracks from a group, or it might be a man called Dirge. But the soundtrack for it is very good for killing zombies too and everything it's very much an interesting title and if you like co-op survival wave based shooters this is the best one for it in my opinion i know a lot of people would probably agree with me when i say that this is probably one of the best wave based survival team shooters very other very few other games can actually come close to this because this offers just such requirement for teamwork you can't go lone wolf in it and actually win so ladies and gentlemen my name has been xpc reaper i want to thank you all for tuning in i want to say that this year we're going to be bringing you a lot more stuff here on trojan horse gaming um just to point out, uh, Moustache is actually going to be building his own PC soon, so soon we'll actually have access to even more content, and that doesn't mean we're going to split it so that we're going to have one person produces content for one day. If, if we can do it, then we're going to have it set so that we're going to be pretty much doubling our content output for this amount of time. And, ladies and gentlemen just want to wish you all a happy new year and